Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk about the color settings and some of the things that we're going to set up our Photoshop so that it works for us and that we know what it's doing instead of just relying on the default settings. Well, first we need to do is we need to get to the color settings and you go to edit and here it is, color settings. You can also get to it by shift control K or shift command K on the Mac. Now once you open it, it will probably look something like this if you, this is the first time you're opening it. This might be set to North America General Purpose 2 and probably you have this little option that says more options here. So it's like a, a reduced version of the dialog box. Now it's fairly complicated dialog box but once you understand it then I think I prepared you up to a point so it shouldn't be that foreign to you. Okay, so basically what this dialog box does, it sets the behavior of Photoshop in regards to color management. Right, that's what it does. And there are a lot of stuff here, so we're going to break it down into smaller pieces, bite-sized bite chunks, so we can take uh, our time and go through it in a real easy pace, and <clears throat> by the time you should have an understanding of what everything does. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this More Options. And this will put up this dialog box which is longer, has a bunch of new sections as you can see. And what we have here is we have this settings option and then we have one working spaces section, two color management policy section, conversion sec section that's three, advanced controls that's four, and then we have a description that's five. So we'll take a look at them one by one. First let's start with the settings. Well, the settings basically are just presets. So once you set up all of these settings up in this entire dialog box, you can save this by going to save, or you can load one from your disk by using the command, uh, the load button here. Now, also uh, the one at the bottom, all the way here, it says description. Well, if you move your mouse anywhere on any of the other options, it will give you basically a description of it. So just so you know, also when you select here uh, any settings that you might find here, let's say we choose prepress 3, what's going to happen is down there in the description box it will give you a description of what that is. When you're saving your own you can name that whatever you want. So let's go back to general purpose 2. That was the default setting that we had when we first opened Photoshop. So let's go around this and check it out. Okay, first of all, working spaces. We talked about working spaces in terms of what to choose for RGB, if you remember, right? If I click on this, I will see a bunch of options. Well, these are the ones that we're really interested in here. You probably have them. It will be Adobe RGB, remember that. We have Apple RGB, which is not the same thing, and I didn't mention it before because it's not something you would normally use. It's more of a legacy feature. We have the Color Match, Pro Photo, sRGB, and if you have installed somewhere, you can also have this ECI RGB, but it's not doesn't come by default, I believe, so you're going to have to go to a certain website and download it. I'll post a link somewhere in the project files. Well, first of all, uh, you have here a working spaces, and this, what it this does, it tells Photoshop how do you want Photoshop to act by default? How would you like Photoshop to act? Now what happens when you don't want it to always act like that? That's decided by these color management policies. So these two dialog boxes are like brother and sister. They work together. So let me show you. We have here under RGB options, we can set our preferred color space for RGB images. Now if you, if you remember, we talked about uh, the common ones. So let's say you're working for the web. You would choose an sRGB here. If you're working a lot with raw files and you want you want to c contain your color and so on, you might choose Pro Photo, or you might choose Adobe RGB. Well, for this purpose, I'm going to choose Adobe RGB. So I'm going to choose Adobe RGB. By the way, you wouldn't choose here something like your monitor profile, which we can use here, or many of these output profiles. You would typically use one of these, right? Not this one. You would use any of these, so probably Adobe RGB, Color Match, Pro Photo, sRGB, or ECI. Those are the common options. I'm going to choose Adobe RGB here. And the CMYK options, well, these are the ones that you expect your output to be. 
by default. You can change this in many different ways, but by default, this is what you expect. Now, by default, it's set to US Web Coded Swap 2, uh, version 2, and this is basically a very default version for North America. And if you remember, when you choose under here on the setting, was set to North America General Purpose 2. That was the preset, right? But if we change that to um, General or uh, Euro Prepress 3, you can see that this changes now to coded Fogra 39. Well, we're going to keep this at general purpose too because that's what we wanted. And when you choose that, this all of these settings will be set based on this preset. Well, we remember we changed this and RGB to Adobe RGB 1998 and we talked about this, right? If we're going to work with images and let's say we're going to send it to prepress and Adobe RGB is a good option. So it's kind of like a medium size color uh, space which allows us to contain much of the information we get from RAW without sacrificing it before we send it off to prepress. Now here we haven't talked about this in real detail but basically under CMYK settings this is what you would choose what do you want to do with your file, what do you want to print it. Now, and this is typically has to do with four color printing process such as prepress. So let's say that I live in in Europe. So let's say this is the one I want to choose. This is one for Europe. You have here for Japan and so on and so forth. You can load other uh, profiles here if you go to load CMYK, and you can find your own other profiles that will suit the intended output better. But if you're in the America, you might choose one of these or some others we will mention later. You. If you're um, in Japan, you might choose one of the Japan ones here or somewhere in Asia, right? But I'm going to choose this one. This is more uh, for for Europe, uh, coded for grad 39. And uh, under gray and spot, well, this is something that most photographers and retouchers don't really do. This is more of a graphic design type of thing. So if you want to pr uh, print gray scale images or if you want to spot colors, and that's more for graphic design. So we'll skip this, we'll keep it simple. We'll just f focus on RGB and CMYK. On the RGB, I have chosen Adobe RGB. I told you why, it's kind of like a medium size. So for our work as a retoucher, that might work best. Under CMYK, I have choos chose Fogra Coded 39 because let's say I'm going to print my files in Europe and that's the one I want to use. Uh, we'll talk about this more in detail in some of the other videos, but just for now, that's what I'm gonna set. You can set something else or you can set it when you know the output. We'll talk about it later. So under color management policies, this is the second section. Well here basically you can say what happens if you import or open it up an image inside of Photoshop. What it is that Photoshop is going to do. I, by default it's set to preserve embedded profiles remember each image will usually have a profile embedded into the image and when you open it up well this simply says preserve whatever the original image had don't change it to our working profile if you set it to off it's going to strip away the profile and if you set it to convert to working RGB whatever the uh, original image profile was it's going to convert it to the working space you set here if it's the same as the working space, it won't do any conversion, but otherwise it will. And this is true for RGB, which corresponds to this dialog box, I mean this button here. CMYK, that's corresponding to this, and gray would be for this. Now, I'm going to set it to preserve embedded profiles on all three. And I'm not going to check these boxes off, which will basically says that if you have a profile mismatch, ask me what to do whenever time I'm opening a file, anytime I'm pasting, copying and pasting file from one document to another, or if I'm having a missing profile. In other words, it says down, down there in the description dialog box what it means if you want to read more. So that's these two dialog boxes. The third one basically says conversion options. Well, here you would choose what the color management system would be, the engine behind all of this. How do you convert between the profiles and all that? You have two options. You have Adobe and Microsoft. I'm not sure on Mac, maybe we'll have Apple or something, but uh, 
I would stick with Adobe because most applications that are going to be working with these files professionally are from Adobe, Adobe. So I would choose that. And here in Intent, well, we'll take a look, we will revisit this option a little bit later. But Intent essentially means uh, how when when you have a um, when you're doing a conversion from one space to the other, how do you manage the colors within the space, right? from one to the other. So let's say you have a Adobe RGB which is a medium sized color space and you sending it off to let's say a CMYK you know, US web code at swap 2 which is a smaller one. How do you condense the colors from a bigger one into the smaller one? Well that's based on these options here. We have four options and uh, the typical two that most people use when working with images such as retouchers or photographers would be either perceptual or relative colometric. These other two are more suited for graphic design and other things. Some say that absolute colometric is also something we might use as as uh, retouchers or photographers. While most people recommend relative colometric or perceptual. I would stick with this, I will leave this at relative colometric because you can change this manually when confronting from one profile to the next in other dialog box. And there you will have more control. So I would leave that on. Under advanced controls, well this is pretty much really advanced and something you typically don't want to do. Basically this desaturate monitor will desaturate your monitor maybe if you want to try to match a very highly saturated monitor to be more like a paper, you know, a printing environment and so on. You can blend colors using different gamma. So these are more advanced options that I probably wouldn't recommend you play around with unless you're very curious or you know what you're doing. So let's revisit this one more time, okay? Under working spaces, this is where we set Photoshop how to act by default. And under RGB, I would set it to Adobe RGB 98. Under CMYK, I would set it for my particular purpose. I'm printing in, uh, I'm going to work for prepress, let's say in Europe at the moment. So I'm going to switch this to 439. How do you know which one to choose? Well, there's going to be a video on that later. So don't worry about it. Just choose one of these here, whichever you like. Uh, this is just uh, something I'm going to tell you to choose here whatever you like and then I'm going to explain more in another video because it doesn't allow, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a tricky topic. So gray and spot I will leave that as it is pretty much unless you have an option, really reason to change this to some other setting and since I'm not going to be printing and uh, using these two options then I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, color management policies, I'm going to set this to preserve embedded profiles for now and I'm going to deliberately check uncheck these options profile mismatch missing profiles and, and this okay for now I'm gonna set all of this the way I just showed you and I'm gonna click OK now let me show you what this means I'm gonna go to bridge and here I have uh, several images that I already prepared in advance and basically I have set these images with a certain profile embedded this one has ECI this one has Profoto, this one has Adobe RGB, and this one has sRGB. This one is completely untagged, doesn't have any profile at all. Now let me show you something. Let's go back to Photoshop. I'm going to open up my um, color settings dialog box again. If you remember, under RGB, we have set this to Adobe RGB 1998, right? And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to bridge once again and I'm gonna click on this image which says that it already has embedded profile Adobe RGB and I'm gonna open it inside of Photoshop and by the way nothing happened right the appearance should remain the same nothing really happened and here under this option down here uh, you can choose on this arrow and you can choose between different settings I'm gonna choose document profile so I can see exactly what the profile of this document is open. Now I didn't do anything really, right? Now because Adobe RGB was the embedded profile within the image and if you remember here we said working spaces Adobe RGB 98 and we said color management policies preserve embedded profiles. Preserve whatever it was in the original, right? Okay, now let me show you something else. I'll open up sRGB now. It opened it, but even though my working spaces, you know, my working space here was Adobe RGB, 
the image had sRGB and it opened it up inside of sRGB. So the image profile overrided what was the setting for working profile here. Why? Because the color management policies here were set to preserve embedded profile. If this was set to convert to working RGB, then let me show you what happens. I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up the same sRGB image once again. And boom, embedded profile mismatch. Embedded one, that's sRGB. What your working setting is, is Adobe RGB. Do you, What do you want to do, right? I'm going to click OK. And here what happened. It converted the profile itself from sRGB to working profile, which is Adobe RGB. I'm going to close that. I'm going to open this up and this time I'm going to set this to off. So we had the preserve embedded profile, nothing happened. Here it converted it and I'm going to set this to off, which is not something you would normally do because you'll see what happens now. I'm going to drag sRGB image into my working profile at the moment is also set to Adobe RGB, but my profile mismatch policy is set to off. It says Embedded working, just like we did before, but what, watch what happens when I click OK. Boom, it stripped the entire profile away. And now we have something that's called untagged RGB. There's no profile inside, which is bad for color management, by the way, because now color managed application has no idea what, what this image should be read by. You know, it has, doesn't have any data on it. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to go to my settings once again. And I'm going to set this to preserve embedded profile. But this time, I'm going to set this to ask when pasting, ask when opening, ask when opening. So all of this so that it gives me an option, additional option. Okay. And I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the same sRGB image. And because I've set ask me when opening, here's what happens. Now it just doesn't open it doesn't convert it, you know, leaves it. It just says embedded profile mismatch. This is the embedded one, this is you set for working one, what exactly you want to do. And it basically these three options are just like the three options inside preserve uh, embedded pro policies in the color settings if you remember. So we can use the embedded profile, basically leaves it the way the original image was. We can convert it, which will convert the sRGB image to a working Adobe RGB, and we can discard this. You know, untag document, just like we did before. But this time it will always give you a dialog box asking you, hey, this is what it is, what do you want to do? So let's close this, and uh, let me show you something else. This time I'm going to, just for, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go here and I'm going to deactivate all these options. It doesn't ask me anything, it just does, does its thing, okay? I'm going to close this image as well. I'm going to go to here and here we have now four images. All of them have different uh, different, different um, embedded profiles. And I'm going to open them all inside of Photoshop. Now all of them opened and check it out. Check down here. This is e ECI RGB and Profoto, Adobe RGB and sRGB. So as you can see when we set our option here, working space, based on these settings, if we say just preserve embedded profile and don't ask me anything, you can work easily with in Photoshop using different documents, different profiles within each document, even though you set your defaults to a certain space. But when it has to ask you something, when it has to convert or do something, it's going to do it based on this setting. So what these working spaces really do is tell Photoshop how to act by default. And these options here, they tell Photoshop what to do when you're working with different profiles within the images themselves. Okay? So, let me show you something else. I'm going to close all this. And uh, by the way, I'm going to go to color settings once again. And this time I'm going to choose all of this open when pasting opening so I'll know what's going on right and also I'm going to click OK 
and let me open up something else. So let me open up the untag document. Now this untag document is something I I uh, exported the image in Profoto and then I stripped away the profile. So now even though I know because I made the image that it was in Profoto, the Photoshop does not. Okay? Now unless I did it first and somebody sent me the untag untag document I would know what the original document was in, what color space, and Photoshop wouldn't know either. So let me show you what happens. Now remember, I have said preserve embedded profile and ask me when opening. So when I try to open this, is what this is what's going to happen? It's going to say missing profile. There's no profile inside. I don't know what to do. What it is that you want to do? And it's going to tell me, do you want to assign a profile? Now there's a difference between convert and assign we're gonna just look at an assign here and here is gonna ask me what it is that you wanna do now let's say I don't know what the image really is so I can assign the working RGB which is the Adobe RGB I can assign a manual one from all these others and I can say leave as is don't color manage don't do anything now do you wanna choose any of these yes you want if you know what do you want to do with it? What profile you assign to? But let's say you don't. If you don't, then it's better to leave this as is and click OK. Now it says untagged RGB, so it doesn't know what the image should be displayed in. It just tries to default to I believe what the working space was, and that will be Adobe RGB. Okay, so but what you can do is you can go to edit and you can say a manually assign which was just like did before the only di difference is that this time we have a preview option because we don't know what the color profile of the image was here with the preview option we have more options visually to see if something would make sense right so you can try to guess work here and you can say working RGB and as you can see nothing happens why because that was the working RGB so when we opened up an image now it's displaying an image based on that but if I click profile photo now let's say I don't know what it was so I say sRGB if I click sRGB you can see what happens it goes image goes really drab nothing really happens right but if I know that this was Profoto then I can set here to Profoto and everything will be fine if I don't, then I can try to guesswork. I can leave this to Photoshop, which will always default to, to working RGB. So as you can see, if you have an untagged document, it's really a guesswork. You don't really know what the original author or application did. So you have to play around with these settings and try to guess what the original was. Okay? I'm going to set this to Profoto. I'm going to click OK. And this is the way the image should look. I just happen to know I, I converted the image to pro, from Profoto to untag one but if you don't know you're just gonna have to basically open it up and then I would suggest you go to assign profile and then use this preview option to basically see what could be the best option for the image because it's all blind work anyway okay now I'm gonna close that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up these two images as well it's gonna ask me use embedded profile sure why not and now we have one in Adobe RGB and another one in sRGB well if I go to my color settings you see it also has an option here profile mismatches ask when pasting so let's see how that works I'm gonna divide this screen into two up vertical so I can see this now I'm gonna select a part of an image here okay and I'm gonna drag it to this one when I do because we set that option to ask me when pasting if there's a profile mismatch it's gonna tell me the source was this destination is this what it is that you wanna do you wanna convert or don't convert and this is where the story about assign or, or convert to profile really comes into play we still haven't talked about it properly so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say convert preserve color appearance when I do the image should look the same even though we had two different profiles so what Photoshop tried to do is preserve the appearance of an image 
but it had to change the data within the image. It's a more destructive process, but it does uh, preserve the appearance. So let me go back. The other one, oops, the other one is don't convert, don't change the data inside of an image, just assign different color numbers. When I do that, the image will look different, but it won't mess around with the data within that image. I mean within the um, that pasted section so it's less destructive in terms of the data within the image but it changes the appearance so you typically don't want to do that so that's one way you can do it now let me show you and I'm gonna do this by simply choosing a color I don't know let's choose some color uh, some blue and uh, I'm gonna fill this entire image with with this color and let me show you now the difference between edit assign profile and convert to profile so you go to edit and you go to assign or convert profile let me show you what it, what happens if I click assign profile actually before I do that let me do some um, preparation work so you'll better see what I mean I'll open up my uh, info panel by the way, you see these options here? If you go to panel options, you can set here uh, document profile and that will show you what the sRGB or whatever the profile here is as well, right? And what the bit depth is and all that stuff. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on my eyedropper color sampler tool, okay? And uh, I'm going to click somewhere and when I do it's gonna give me the numbers of that blue color here now check this out if I go to edit and I go to assign profile and I, I let's I say I assign pro photo to this what's gonna happen is that image is gonna change drastically right but check out the numbers here the numbers have remained the same which means that the data within the image doesn't change what does change is the appearance because it has, something has to give either the appearance or the numbers within or the data within the image right so when you assign a profile like this a different profile you're telling Photoshop don't touch the data within the image just change the appearance of an image because you have to change something I'm gonna click cancel because there's no point in doing that and if I go to convert and I do the same thing here under destination space we have here source space and we have destination space under destination space I'm gonna choose pro photo once again and let me show you the pre pre preview option you see the image doesn't change but look at the numbers here this was before and this is after so now Photoshop in order to preserve the appearance of an image has to change the data within the image so convert to profile changes the data leaves the appearance the same or as much as it can and uh, assign to profile it doesn't change the data within the image but it does change the appearance and by the way when you go to convert to profile you have your source destination space and you here have an option to, to decide how do you want to do that the conversion now because we're converting from one RGB to the another this really doesn't make any difference all of the changes from one mm, RGB color space to another except few exceptions will always use relative color metric this comes into play when you're converting to CMYK from RGB we'll talk about that in some other video here we can choose a Microsoft or Adobe engine like I said we're gonna choose Adobe here you have a few options like use black point compensation and ditter those options I would leave uh, on because it helps with the conversion and if you click on the advanced option you also have here some other stuff uh, like you know you can change this to CMYK uh, lab uh, RGB gray and there's just a bunch of new options which typically you would not use so I won't just trouble you with a bunch of new options again so I'll just use this to basic and uh, that's what it happens right if I click OK the image will change to pro photo will remain the appearance of the image but it will change the data basically damaging the file a little bit 
So that's how the uh, convert and assign options work. Now I'm going to close this. So let me go back to our um, bridge and this is an sRGB right so if I click and drag it here it's gonna tell me do you want to use the embedded one do you want to convert we just saw what happens when we convert right we're gonna remain the uh, we're gonna keep the appearance as much as we can and we're going to change the data within the image use the embedded profile just keep the profile as it is and once again I'm gonna open up one Adobe RGB the other is going to be sRGB and I'm gonna do the pasting thing again because this time you know what it means so I'm gonna do a arrange to horizontal oops to vertical sorry and I'm gonna to go to sRGB and I'm gonna drag this you know, copy paste it here and now it's gonna ask me convert or don't convert so this basically means assign so you either convert to profile or assign to profile and as we saw before it even gives you a small explanation just like we saw before right convert means preserve color appearance but change the data within the image assign or basically don't convert means preserve color uh, preserve color numbers preserve the numbers in within the image but you will have to then change the appearance so based on what you want to do Typically, you would want to convert, and this is by default option. But some situations you might want to do a sign, although I don't know when. So you want to keep the appearance, right? And boom, we get the same appearance, even though we have two documents with two different profiles. So that's how you would manage the color going from one to the other. Okay. Now let me kill this one. Now we have just the uh, sRGB, and. Uh, let me show you something else. If I go to color settings again, uh, this option here, which goes from working space, you know, the options we set here for RGB and CMYK, based on these two options, this also it becomes relevant when you go to image and you go to mode, and now you go from RGB document to CMYK. It says you're about to convert CMYK using Fogra right because that's the one we set as our default and this may not be what you intended to choose a different profile use edit convert to profile right so unless you go here edit mode you can always do edit convert to profile much safer option and then here you can choose any other let's say that we do want Fogra 39 this time we get the appearance here option as well and uh, I'm going to click OK because there wasn't a lot of saturation in the image you didn't see much of a change the Fogra had was actually bigger a little bit than the sRGB and the image wasn't super saturated so we didn't have any issue converting that's why I didn't see the appearance changing which is good right because we worked in the sRGB let's say and we want to print in Fogra it will be perfect we didn't have any changes so that's how you would do it I'll go to edit and also um, we haven't talked about this yet but the options you see here we can also soft proof our images and this basically means that we soft proof we're trying to simulate how the image will look if it's going to be printed so if you were to go to view and you go to proof colors now it's gonna change the appearance and it's gonna change the appearance whatever was default here unfortunately I think I had this set to color blindness yeah I was doing some experiments but here you can say uh, which is typically by default it says here working CMYK and then when I choose this option nothing will happen because we just saw foreground is bigger than sRGB so there's no real appearance on the image but typically you would have an appearance and uh, this working CMYK that will be the one you set in the color settings okay so that's the other option where this matters okay now let's go back to color settings and explain some of the other stuff that we have not checked yet so now you know how working spaces work what do they matter you know how color management policies work and where do they matter okay uh, we talked about conversion options. Now, this one we didn't talk about in detail because we're going to discuss 
that when we get to soft proofing, that's where it really counts, and doing the conversions uh, later. Uh, options like use black point compensation, there's a big, big description down at the bottom that says what it does. Basically, it's something you want to keep on. Did our command we so uh, when we talked about bit depth, how that works, so that's pretty cool if you're using 8-bit images. If you're doing some kind of a really sensitive scientific work, then you might turn it off so you don't contaminate the data. Compensate for scene referred files, this is more for After Effects, so if you're not working with that, you can leave that on. And the uh, last thing we want to check is the settings here. Right, let's say these are the settings that I like to use, okay? Well, I can now go to Save, and I can save this under, it's going to default me into settings, it's going to differ from Mac to PC, and let's call this My Settings. Uh, actually, yeah, let's call this My Settings, I'm really creative today. So I'll click Save, and boom, it's going to ask me, the comment entered here will appear in the description area. In other words, whatever I'm going to write here is going to appear here. So let's call this Color Settings Tutorial, just for the sake of it. I'm going to click OK, and boom. Now it's going to send me that description down here. So if I choose here, let's say General Purpose, I'm oh, sorry, I don't, got, I don't have to move my mouse to show you, but just look it down there at the description dialog box. See what it says? Basically, somebody else gives it a description, right? If I choose this to my settings, it says whatever I wrote there, right? So I can do that. I can load from somebody else. Now I get to load my own settings, and this is pretty cool if you have maybe you know you're switching to another version of Photoshop or if you have multiple computers and you want to use the same settings you don't have to manually do that if you want to send your settings to somebody else so that, that that's the reasons why you want to use that and also if you hold your alt key this cancel here switches to reset and if I click reset it's gonna reset to custom essentially settings so that's basically what you can do in most of dialogues from Adobe, when you hold down your Alt or Option key, the Cancel button switches to Reset. It's kind of like a, you know additional tip. Anyway, so basically that will be the uh, color settings for your Photoshop. This is how you can go back and forth and as, as we progress through these tutorials we'll talk about this some more so even though it looks scary and there's a lot of information I think that if I you know divide it into smaller sections it won't be that foreign to you. So basically, yeah, that's how you would do color settings for Photoshop.